Okay. All right, so today we're going to look at a, a two-hour workout that I did with uh, Elizabeth Laviolette. So she's a softball player at Boston College. She had reached out and wanted to meet up and talk some hitting, work on her swing. I'm going to kind of go through, I, I filmed some of the uh, drills um, that we did. It was really windy out, so I wasn't able to film a ton um, but I want to kind of break down some of the things that we talked about, what a typical workout looks like with a player, especially, you know, a player that, whether it's softball or baseball, someone that's, um, again, this isn't just a high level player. I mean, this can, this, uh, typical workouts, regardless of the age go pretty similarly. The only difference is when we're working out someone older that is playing at the division one level that we're able to get video. We're able to talk through, we usually talk a lot more because um, the player has a pretty good understanding of of how their season has gone, what their swing feels like, what they're trying to accomplish. I want to make sure that I'm on the same page with them as far as what their coaching staff is, is uh, trying to do with them. And so let's go through and I'll show you her swing. We'll talk about the things that we worked on, some of the changes that we made. We made a lot of changes and uh, only really two hours, um, really, really good changes. Um, so let's start off with the first thing when we meet up. You know, I put her, before we even really get going, um, she goes through a warm-up, um, and then we talk about the season. And what she described to me as far as how her season was going was that she noticed that her ball flight was really off in a couple of ways. So first, we looked at a bunch of video from this season. So I had her collect a bunch of video from her year. And what stood out to me was that a lot of balls were fouled straight back. So she took a lot of swings where balls were fouled straight back. She also had a lot of balls that were hit in the air to left field and were hit on the ground um, to the right side. And when they were hit on the ground, they were they were smothered down into the ground. So they were bouncing not very far out in front of the plate. So we had fl we had balls in the air to left. We had smothered balls uh, to the right, and we had foul balls straight back. And so knowing that gives me an idea of what her bat path is doing. Um, but then we also put her through um, a bunch of swings. Okay, so I want to see her swing in action. Okay, so what I saw from the videos previously, I spent probably, I don't know, 30 minutes or so breaking down all her game swings. Um, and then now looking at her practice swing, very similar. And some players will look a little bit different in game or practice. But what she does and what we talked about after we uh, let her hit for a while and then we kind of broke the, the swing down together is that she wants to get forward, right? So what she likes to do is she will... She will shift forward, so she'll get into her front side first. So what you want to feel is you want to feel like you get this leg loaded back, right? And now as I start to swing, that is what shifts my weight. But what she does is she has a tendency to want to shift forward, right? So she'll shift forward first, and that causes her a couple things. One, she makes this move where as she shifts forward, she gets long back here. Right, so shift forward, starts to get long on the backside. But now because she is forward, as she continues to turn, you'll see that her upper body, her lower body, all of her weight wants to get forward. Once she gets forward, now what happens is her upper body wants to pull to the right. Right, so her upper body pulls hard this way, so it's forward, and these go together typically. She's forward, she's to the right with her upper body. Once her body gets forward and to her right, her barrel gets out away from her. So now her barrel is working longer through the zone. It's not working from the inside. It's working from the outside and then cutting across, but it also is working down. So her swing always wants to work out around and down so most of the balls that she hits right so if you if you look at her path right here if we took an attack angle on that that's probably that's probably almost zero degrees it's probably pretty flat um, 
she almost never gets the barrel turned to get up into the ball. She either gets completely flat or she hits it neg with a negative attack angle. So down through the ball and down through contact. And so when she cuts down through contact, she hits the bottom of the ball and the ball typically goes up and it goes to the left because not only is she down, she's across. So when your barrel works across to the right as a lefty and it's going down, the ball is going to go up and to the left. When she hits the top part of the ball, she smothers the ball in the ground to the right side because, again, she's working this way. So if you hit the top part of the ball, if you're working down and you hit the top part of the ball, the ball is going to go straight down. right? And, again, because she works from out to in, she's going to pull the ball on the ground. So her swing is very kind of flat to down. It's out to in instead of in out. And so she gets, you know, she gets a lot of balls, like I said, pulled on the ground, smothered, um, flares in the air to left, or just fly balls to the air to left. And then again, foul balls back. This is one thing we talked about. I know that when my swing in 2008 started to get really steep to the ball, really down to the ball, down, down, down to the ball, I would get these balls that I thought I was going to crush and I'd foul them back because my barrel was never in the zone. So it was cutting down like this. And so instead of getting my barrel turned behind the ball, which would give me the ability to drive the ball and square the ball up more, I'd foul the ball back. And I would step out and go, man, how did I miss that ball? Like, I never missed that ball. I said that to her and like her eyes got really big and she goes, that's my season. She's like, that's, there are balls that are right there that I think I'm going to smash and I foul them back and I don't know why. And so we talked a lot about bat path and the, and the importance of path and the importance of getting the barrel turned from the inside and then turn behind what I call again behind the ball and being able to get the barrel to be slightly up through the hitting zone and giving ourselves a really big hitting window to hit in and we talked about how that leads to more consistency and more flush contact and better ball flight and being able to use the middle of the field more and and not and not being down through it so much that we just clip the bottom and put a ton of backspin on the ball and the ball just kind of um, instead of going out, it goes up. And then how being around the ball and from the outside causes, you know, us to smash the ball to the right side in the ground. And we spent a lot of time talking about that. And then after all that, we went into the drills. So for the drills, and I don't, I didn't, I don't have video of all the drills, but we went through probably six drills. So this is the first drill. This is the coil drill. We go toes forward. You guys have probably seen me do this drill a lot. We're working on getting this leg loaded right here. We're working on getting the upper body coil back and getting into a pulled back position. So this was the first swing that she took. I ended up getting this arm right here, this left arm, to get up back behind the hands. So we like to feel it in our back. We want to get the elbow behind our hands. So rear elbow, a rear arm behind top hand. So that's one move that we ended up working on. Again, this is just the very first swing. So everything's gonna feel weird, like your contact point feels weird, your timing, you're thinking about stuff. So that's why I warn everyone at the beginning, you're gonna swing and miss. Okay, ready? You gotta stay right there, don't move. Yeah. So it's like you're loading your body this way so that you can then go that way. From here, we want to feel like as our leg turns, our upper body works back more north-south. Again, she has an issue kind of pulling hard to the right. And so we want to be able to, if you want to stay on the ball and from the inside, you can't pull hard to the right. You've got to work your upper body more north-south. This is a great drill to really um, exaggerate that on. And so you can see that. Again, this is her first swing, so she's still a little bit forward. You can see the, uh, the upper body working back slightly out, but more back than it was before. You can still see, again, early on, she still gets, because her body gets this way, her barrel wants to get a little bit long, but we're just starting. We're just starting to try to get the barrel to work up through the ball. So I tell her to exaggerate it. We go through this drill here with our toes forward for about probably 50 swings or so. Then we put our toes, we do what's called a half coil. It's the same idea, same type of drill, but instead of our toes facing forward, we have our toes facing towards the third baseman as a left-handed hitter. We're working on the same thing. As the leg turns, the upper body is going to work back. We're going to try to get pulled back and coiled 
with the lower body, getting the leg loaded, getting the upper body coiled, getting pulled back, getting the barrel and the upper body to work rearward as the leg turns, and now we get our barrel to turn up into the ball. So we do that drill for probably um, probably another 50 swings or so. Again, feel back, coil, back, again. Coil, chest over, back. And then just go back with your upper body, back. Yeah, again. Then we did uh, a couple of other drills that I don't have video of, but we basically go from toes forward and then we slowly start to work our way to a normal stance. When we finally get into the normal stance, we do what I call a hover drill or a crate drill. We use their helmet right here. And so here now we're trying to feel, and we're already kind of, we kind of preset the load a little bit. And again, this is the first time she did this drill. We continue to try to work on getting the back pocket turned so the hips close and coil and the leg loads back. We get the upper body coiled back. Here you can see she's really trying to get the rear arm behind the, the top hand. So everything is exaggerated. You have to exaggerate it or else you won't, you won't make any adjustments from what you normally do in your swing to what we're trying to get you to do. We're trying to feel that she's going to stay coiled as she moves out. So it's a feeling of staying back as you move forward, resisting back with the upper body, keeping the lower body loaded back. Again, first time doing the drills, so she's working on it. She got much, much better as we continue to go. And then we really worked on getting the upper body to turn back, right? So you can see this, this tilting action or upper body working back. So you're starting to see it now come together. That looks like a completely different swing than what she was just doing at the beginning. Now, this is probably an hour later, right? And we've taken hundreds of swings at this point, but much, much better with the barrel getting turned behind the ball, right? So we continue to work on it. We also do uh, net, neck slot drills. We'll put the bat on your neck. That was another way to kind of get her to feel like she wasn't going to get this disconnected feel, but she was going to keep the bat in her neck. And then when it was time to go and she was going to make this move, it was just upper body back, barrel back. How tight can we make this turn with our hands? Can we just get the knob turned up quickly and get the barrel to turn back as fast as we can? So we went through this again for a bunch of swings, continue to work on it. Sometimes people think that they're like magic drills. We did probably again five or six drills. Do I think the drills help? Absolutely, or I wouldn't do them. But people can do the drills wrong. So it's not just about the drills, it's about understanding the concepts. What are we trying to do? The drills give us a little bit better feel, in my opinion, on the things that we're trying to accomplish. Again, those feels that we're trying to accomplish. So you have to have the drills, but you have to have the understanding of what we're trying to accomplish because I see people try to do the drills and they do them completely wrong, right? And so I just walked her through that. And so here we are now, probably about almost two hours later, about an hour and 45 minutes later. And you can see I just got a side by side here and you can see a completely, a completely different swing. So the first thing is notice the loading action right here, right? So if you look at the left, the one on the left is the new swing. The one on the right is the first swing. You can see her starting to load her body, right? Starting to get her back pocket turned, get her hips to close, get her leg to load back, right? You can see upper body starting to coil. You can see her starting to try to get that rear arm to get back behind her hands. As she picks up her front foot now, look at the difference in positions, right? So here you can see her rear elbow. Here you can. It's behind her hands. Here you can see the back pocket is turned, the coiling of the lower body. You can see the coiling of the upper body, right? She looks like she's going to be back in this video right here, right? As she starts to move out, again, look at the difference here. You can see forward, right? So she's forward in this. She's starting to shift here. She's still loaded. This leg is still loaded back. She's still coiled. She's still pulled back. Her upper body's in a better position. Her rear arm's still behind her hands. So now, when it's time to go, right, here we go. So if you look at the one on the right, what you'll see is because she shifts, everything's going to pull hard to the right, right? Pull hard to the right. Upper body still going forward. Barrel is getting long and out away from her. 
So this one right here, again, look at the difference in positions here. So forward, off the ball, long, and this barrel is going to work around the ball and cut across. Here, she starts to turn her back leg before she shifts forward. Her upper body starts to work more north-south. Her barrel is tighter. Her knob is going to turn up quicker. Her barrel is working back. All right, so now you have a much different path, right? Now you're setting yourself up to be from the inside versus from the outside. You're setting yourself up to be short and quick versus long, right? You're on, you're on the ball, you're off the ball. And so as we continue to go and continue to turn here, now look at the positions, right? Back, forward. Look at the lead arm positions, up, down. So here in this swing, now she makes contact with this ball a little bit deep, but she has the ability on this swing now to make contact deeper, but she, can, she could make it out front. Right, but she's in the zone. She's turned the barrel. She's in the zone early. Now, if she hits the ball to the other way, she's going to drive it. Her barrel's turned behind the ball. Here, barrel is not turned behind the ball. Plus, this just isn't a powerful position. She hasn't used her body as well. She's not going to get that stretch or separation. When this leg turns and your upper body works back and your barrel works back, you've got the, it's like an elastic band. You have two opposite directions, and so your body works together much better. You create what some people call separation or torque or stretch. When everything goes forward, right, she's going to have everything going forward over here. She's not going to create as much bat speed, and her bat path is affected. So you're affected in, in multiple ways, right? And you can really see it here. Leg turning and her upper body working back, right? And, and she's turning everything much, much deeper and much more from the inside. There. So huge changes in a really short amount of time. You know, when you work with players that are higher level players that understand their swing, maybe they don't understand their swing, but... When we, when we started to talk, she started to understand her swing much more. Like things made sense to her. She's a really smart player. She was able to make the adjustments super fast, and she bought in. And so when you buy in and you want to make the changes and you really sell out on them, you know, I explained earlier, I said you might swing and miss a lot here for the first half an hour if you just continue to work on it, continue to buy in. I said, but before you leave today, your swing is going to be completely different. And when players do that, this is what happens. Their swings look completely different in like a two hour period of time. A lot of people will say like, you can't change swings. It's not possible or it just takes forever. Um, I mean, I think this is a pretty good example of a player that changed her entire swing and learned a lot about hitting in a really, really short amount of time. So um, she's actually coming back. She's from Florida. She's coming back up to do some work uh, next week. And so We'll continue to work on some of these things, but for only a two-hour session, it's pretty darn good. Anyways, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, maybe the next time I work with her, I'll mic up the entire session so you guys can see a little bit more in depth some of the things that we're talking about and doing. But that's all we have. If you want to learn more about this, obviously we have tons of videos. We also have um, an online hitting course that we go through every drill that every drill that I know that I use with our players, and we go over the four core principles and basically everything I did with her is there so you guys can check that out in the um, description box below that's all i got thanks again for watching subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up all that good stuff we'll talk to you later if you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season this is essential for you matt antonelli here former major league player first round pick and college coach with this course we're going to show you exactly step by step how to generate power develop bat speed and enhance swing mechanics regardless of your hitter's age this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. 
We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level.